Hi, I'm Thomas Armstrong, and I'd like to talk with you about my latest book. It's a novel, the first novel I've ever written, and it's called Childless. It's about a childless child psychologist who tries to foil a U.S. government plot to declare childhood as a medical disorder and eliminate it from the human genome. And this is actually the third or fourth uh, video that I've been doing in a series uh, about childless and about some of the themes and issues that are inside the plot, essentially. And today I'd like to talk about neoteny which is a central theme. Now, I hope that that term doesn't turn you off. Um, it's actually an extremely important point. It may be the, the element that makes us most human as a species. And so let me explain what it means, and then I'll tell you a little bit about how I apply it in the novel. Neoteny is a Latin word meaning holding youth. And it's the process through which we hold on to childlike characteristics as we grow older. And uh, this ha happens in evolution. If you look at apes, for example, you'll see a baby chimp who looks very human-like, just like a little infant practically. But then when that chimp grows up, all those features of babiness and childlikeness are gone. And the chin juts out and the forehead recedes and so forth. And so that's really a, an example of no neoteny or, or less neoteny than humans. Because in humans, you look at an infant child and then you compare that to them, you know, 40 years later, and they still have many of the same facial characteristics. Sure, the hair may be gray and the jowls may be sagging, etc. But ultimately, they've held on to those traits. And I've been talking about physical traits, but there are also psychological traits associated with neoteny. And I'm talking about the traits of childhood that we associate with the most positive aspects of childhood. Playfulness, imagination, wonder, uh, creativity. And these are elements that children, um, in my other work, in some of my books, I've talked about the natural genius of children, that they're born as geniuses. They're born with this in innate sense of joy in learning new things. And um, it's very important for survival uh, because if we had been born not at all interested in our environment, then when the environment changed, we wouldn't be prepared to meet the challenge and we'd go extinct. But fortunately, we've had these neotenous characteristics in children to begin with that have succeeded in the genetic race and uh, I ha um, and the uh, idea of neoteny then is that we need to hold on as we grow older to our imagination, to our creativity, to our playfulness, to our sense of wonder and awe in the universe. And it's interesting because the you know certified geniuses of culture like Einstein, oftentimes um, they don't use the word neoteny, but they talk about what they do in comparison with children. Einstein said, I never grew up. Um, he said that, you know, all children are interested in time and space. I just never grew out of it. Uh, and then he got some adult-like skills in mathematics to be able to do something with it. So at any rate, that's a bit what ne of ne what neoteny is. Uh, if you think about it in a simple way, it's um, staying young at heart as you grow older. Now, the I'll just mention what the plot is um, in Childless that relates to this. Now, as I mentioned, um, Harvey Sumner, the protagonist in this novel, uh, gets kidnapped by the U.S. government, and he learns of this plot. And what they plan to do is the opposite of neoteny. They plan to bring old age back down to the earliest years of life. Well, not actually old age, more like middle adulthood. Uh, what they want to do is make it so that a person will be born and then they'll pop into adulthood a few seconds or minutes after birth. I actually call these um, individuals popcorn adults in, in the book. It's a satire. You got to remember that. <clears throat> and a dark comedy also. And so they're trying to bring adulthood down into childhood. 
But there's an opposite. There's another side. There's an, actually a Nobel Prize winning geneticist who's a um, who, who who's been diagnosed with schizophrenia, but he's brilliant. And he's been working, he worked for the government for a while until he realized what they were after, that they were doing this horrible thing of essentially eliminating childhood. So he gets to work and he actually is working on a strategy to extend childhood. And that's, he's, he's pro neoteny. And so it's really a battle in the, in the book between these two uh, elements. It's almost like good versus evil. You've got people promoting neoteny or the holding of youth. And you've got people uh, promoting what I call, I've, I had to coin a new word in the book because there wasn't one that I saw in the dictionary, um, promote centeny, which is the holding of old age. And so there's a battle between these two sides and there are retroviruses involved in um, the genetic engineering in both cases. And if you look at one of my other videos, um, my one just previous to this, I talk a little bit about retroviruses and their function in the novel. And I also have some uh, some blog posts that uh, talk more about retroviruses and some actual scientific papers that talk about uh, how we're getting the ability to resurrect resurrect these ancient viruses that are located in our genome that we have just kept, you know, um, over uh, millennia. And uh, the, some people associate autoimmune diseases with some of these endogenous, human endogenous retroviruses. Anyway, I don't wanna get into that right now. I just wanna show you, or uh, I wanna emphasize that a theme of this book, in fact, at the very first chapter, Harvey Sumner gives a talk to parents and he introduces them to neoteny. And it becomes sort of a clarion call for a theme that will be woven in throughout the uh, narrative in different ways. And I won't tell you who wins out in the end. You'll have to read the book, um, at least the last chapter, to find out um, whether or not that that's the case. Now, Childless is um, it's available on Amazon as a Kindle or ebook, so you can read it on your uh, smartphone, or you can read it on your tablet or your Kindle, and also in paperback form. And if you go to my website and click on my books, my website is www.institute for the number four learning.com. Institute the number four learning.com. Institute for learning.com. If you go to that site, then and click on uh, books at the top. Uh, ribbon um, that runs horizontally across the website. You'll go to a list of my books, which I'm uh, currently in the act of um, fleshing out, you know, getting more of my books onto that site. And then you can go to that, um, get more information about this book. There's an endorsement from a writer. There's a preview, so you can read the first few chapters. Uh, and there are also buttons so that you can buy the book from Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Indie Books, or Indie Bound rather, uh, Powell's Books, and so forth. So at any rate, that's a little bit about Childless, and I'm really excited about it. It took me 20 years to write it, and it's great to have it done. And now I'm uh, consumed with telling other people about it. So I hope that you read it. If you do read it and you like it, that you'll give it a review or at least a rating on Amazon because that's really helps sell books and uh, that you'll just tell other people about the book. So thanks very much for listening to me and um, I'll probably have two or three more videos on Childless uh, to come. Thanks again. Bye-bye.